could we really move mountains the way Jesus said we could? Is that something that people could do today? Have you ever known anybody that's ever moved a mountain before, or even for that matter, cursed a fig tree? Hi, this is Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. I want to talk to you about faith today. And I've done series uh, in the past on the subject of faith, but I want to get into something very specific today. In the book of Job, we read this scripture, quote, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. How about that? Is it possible that you could simply decree it, and it will be established? Now, now maybe that's where the um, name it and claim it uh, movement came from, from this and other verses, of course. But there is some truth to this, because uh, I'm not saying that all the name and claim it stuff is exactly right. I'm not saying that. I don't even know what all of them teach about it. But, but certainly the Bible does say right here, this is Job chapter 22 and verse 28, you will decree a thing and it will be established. And Jesus affirms this in Mark chapter 11 and verse 23, and he made this statement. Truly I say to you, the King James says verily, that means truly, truly I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but will believe that what he says comes to pass, he'll have whatever he says. Now, you know, people have said, you know, that kind of sounds like that New Age teaching. Years and years ago, before I'd ever even heard of the New Age movement, this was back in the mid-80s, um, I heard about this seminar on mind development, and so I went to it. And the, the lady, it was a lady instructor there, and she had, must have had at least 60 people in, her, in this classroom. And she said, you know, Jesus said, and she quoted Mark eleven twenty three, and people are sitting there feverishly taking notes. Now, if a preacher had said it, they may not have believed it, but, but you know, this woman was, was teaching this mind development thing. Now, I found out later that people consider that particular seminar part of the New Age. I had never heard at that time of the New Age movement. Uh, but the, somebody said this, well, where do you think the New Agers got it from anyway? They got it from Jesus. <clears throat> not everything that <clears throat> the pagans and the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Taoists, the various heathen religions, not everything they say is wrong. Not everything the Catholics and the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses say, not everything they say is wrong, if you're a good Baptist, let's say, because you might consider well, they're wrong. But not everything that any church says, so far as I know, is totally wrong. They've got some wrong things, but, uh, but human beings make mistakes, don't we? We're human. But we also have some truths. And so even the New Agers are going to get some, a few things right, but if it agrees with Scripture, then it's right. And the Bible is Holy Scripture, and I've proved that over the years. I've got an article I'd like to give you free of charge. There's no request for money. We just want to bless you, and it's about faith. It's, it, it's about the faith of God, how to have the faith of God. And with this type of faith, you can move mountains. In Mark chapter 11 and verse 22, reading from the King James Version, in fact, any version in English has it translated this way that I've checked. In Mark chapter 11, in verse 22, quoting from the King James Version, and to my knowledge, all the English versions say the same thing. It says, Jesus answered him saying, have faith in God. Now that's what the King James says, have faith in God. Look in the margin and every Bible student needs to have a center reference margin. And here's what it says in the margin. If you have a good, good reference Bible, I use the uh, first edition of the Schofield Reference Bible. And you can also just read it in the Greek if you know how to read Greek. And you'll see that the margin has it correct. The margin tells you that what Jesus actually said is have the faith of God. It's in the genitive case in Greek. And I've read it in the Greek. And, and the word God is in the genitive case, which means of God. And so Jesus did not actually say have faith in God. Now, uh, obviously, we, you know, I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't have faith in God. But what he said there was have the faith of God. Have that kind of faith. Now, what kind of faith does God have? Absolute perfect faith. When, when God said, let there be light, do you think he, he sat there and he, he kind of rubbed his hands together and he started sweating, thinking, man, I sure hope this works. No, no, he knew it was going to work. He said, let there be light, and there was. Jesus said, have the faith of God. And then the next verse says, for truly I say to you, and now he explains 
he defines what the faith of God is. He said, for, here it is, here's the faith of God. This is a definition of the faith of God. For whosoever shall say, and he mentions you can say to a mountain. In Matthew 21 it says, or you can say it to a fig tree, either way. Um, whosoever shall say, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things, not just moving mountains, whatever it is, that those, if he believes that those things that he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Wow. Now, people say, well, if that's true, Christians would be moving mountains all over the place. Well, but they don't. Somebody might say, well, if that's true, why we'd all be rich, wouldn't we? Well, they're not. And I'll tell you why. It's not because God's word is not true. There are other scriptures, too that we have to use to interpret what Jesus said. Not that we interpret it. Second Peter 1.20 says the scriptures have no private interpretation. It's, the Greek could be translated of no private origination. You don't want to originate in, in your own mind what you think that means. Now listen, when you look at all the other scriptures and let them interpret the scripture that you're studying, that's the correct way to study the Bible. And James, in the book of James, says you have not because... You ask not. And then there are people that ask and don't receive. He said, you ask wrongly, you don't receive, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lusts. Now, if I'm just moving the mountain to show off, it probably ain't going to work. But what if I have a need? What if I actually need that mountain to be moved? You know, Joshua made the sun stand still and the moon stand still. And it wasn't that he was saying, hey, guys, come here, look what I can do. No, -uh, no, no, that would have been asking amiss. The way Joshua had the sun to stand still is he had a battle that he needed to fight. He needed to fight before it get dark. He, he needed to get the victory before it got dark, and it was getting dark. The sun was setting. So, so here we are in the afternoon, possibly late afternoon, and Joshua tells the sun to stand still. And God honors that because Jesus said, Whosoever will say and not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he says will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever. He says, not just whatever he prays for, whatever he says. Now you think about that. Now in, in Job 22 and verse 28, we read, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Now if you'd like to get more information, this article on faith will send it to you free of charge. I'm going to give you a telephone number. Get a pencil handy. I'm going to give you a telephone number here in just a few minutes where you can call this number and make sure you'll get an answering machine. Make sure you spell out your street address. Give us your zip code. And make sure we have your name. And we'll get this off to you as soon as we can. Now, we read here, you're to decree it and it will come to pass. And then Jesus said, whosoever will say even to a mountain, if he decrees for that mountain to move, it'll move. Think about that. It will move if you want it to. Now, in verse 24 of Mark 11, he said, Therefore, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive, and you'll have. Why is it then that Christians aren't seeing all kinds of miracles? How come we're not moving mountains? How come we're not walking on water? Because John 14, verse 12 says, The works that Jesus did, we can do. But, but, in James chapter 1, starting in, in uh, verse 5, it says, If you lack wisdom, ask of God. However, it says, And it shall be given him. If you ask, it will be given. He says, However, let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. Nothing wavering. Now, the word wavering is also translated doubting elsewhere in the Bible. What he said was nothing doubting, or doubting nothing, as we would say in modern English syntax. Syntax is word order. The word order we would use is not nothing doubting, but doubting nothing. So this is what James actually said, if you put it in modern English. Do, do any of you lack wisdom? Then let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and upbraids not. That means he doesn't scold you. And it shall be given him, but, now here's the catch, let him ask in faith, doubting nothing. See, real faith, the faith of God is, it's the same kind of faith that God used when he made the universe. And God didn't have any doubts. God didn't stand there and wring his hands and he's beginning to sweat and think, man, I sure hope this works because I'm going to look really dumb when this doesn't work and the angels sit there and shake their heads. No, no, no. God knew it was going to work because God made the universe to be, you might say, and this is a term I came up with, it's, it's like 
it's voice activated. Some years ago, I saw on 60 Minutes that they had a, a computer. Now that you just say the words, walk into your house, your whole computer, your whole house has been uh, programmed uh, by sound to react on this computer. So you walk in, you say, let there be light. Uh, you wouldn't say it like that. You just say, lights on, and the light comes on. You'd say, TV on, TV comes on. Now that was probably over 20 years ago when I saw that report, and probably today they got the bugs worked out, and because uh, that's what that article on 60 Minutes was about. They were having a lot of bugs with it, but today it's probably working. Maybe some of you have that kind of uh, system in your home where you just walk in and speak. You say, TV on, TV comes on. So that's how the universe is. It's voice activated, and God set it up like that. Not only can God say, let there be, but Jesus tells us that we can say it too. In Matthew 21, this is Matthew's account of Jesus saying we can move a mountain. Uh, he cursed the fig tree, remember. This is also in Mark 11, verse 12. He cursed the fig tree. And the next day they come through there and Peter says, wow, look at that, that fig tree that you put a curse on. He put a curse on it. He didn't cuss at it. Okay, I want to make sure you understand that. So that fig tree that you put a curse on has withered away. He marveled at that. And Jesus answered him and said, if you have faith, you shall not only, you, Peter, as a mere human being, you shall not only do what is done to the fig tree, but if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, it'll obey you. And uh, Matthew 17, I believe that's correct. Let me look it up real quick. I just happened to think about this, and I want to read it to you because I want to make sure I get it right. Matthew 17 and verse 20, Jesus said to them, they want to know how come we, talking to the disciples, how come we couldn't cast out this demon that this kid have? He said, because of your unbelief. Now, most of the time the margin is correct. My margin is incorrect. It says little faith. Now, that doesn't even make sense because Jesus said if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, okay? So it wasn't little faith. If you look this up in the actual Greek text, it says you're without faith. I don't know why the margin said little faith because it is not little. It's without uh, but um, So you have to be careful about the margins. 99% of the time, though, they're very helpful. So Jesus said, you couldn't cast out this demon because of your unbelief. This is Matthew 17 and verse 20. For verily I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, that's pretty small, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And listen to this, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, you, wait a minute. You mean if you had a little tiny grain of mustard seed faith, you could move a mountain? In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul said, even if I have all faith that I could move a mountain, I've got to have love or I'm nothing. So you take that mustard seed that you've got right now, and you begin to grow it. You begin to study the Scriptures. You begin to really water that seed with the Word of God until your faith grows and grows and grows. And one of these days, when that faith has grown to a particular uh percentage or whatever it is when it when it becomes sufficient then you can move the mountain now here's the telephone number to call if you'd like to get that article on how to have the faith of god just say send me the one on faith i'll know which one you mean here's the telephone number 704 it's uh, non-denominational it's free of charge no request for money 704-938-6415 that's 704-938-6415 it's absolutely free of charge just ask for the one on faith and learn how to grow your faith Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 says, God has dealt to every one of you the measure of faith, but now it's time to learn how to grow that faith by getting into the promises of God. And in this article, you'll also find out how to know the will of God. Until next time, from Ambassador Christian College, this has been Keith Slough.